Hi again, this is Andy, KA4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 18 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam. In this lesson, we go over the G4D questions. The G4D questions cover speech processors, S meters, and common connectors. What is the reason for using a properly adjusted speech processor with a single sideband phone transmitter? The answer is that it improves the signal intelligibility at the receiver. So basically a speech processor helps your voice be better understood at the receiving end. So it improves the quality, if you will, of your signal if it's properly adjusted. If it's not properly adjusted, it can be a nightmare. But if it's properly adjusted, a speech processor will improve the intelligibility of your signal at the receiver, which makes you better able to communicate. Which of the following describes how a speech processor affects a transmitted single sideband signal? The answer is it increases the average power. And you kind of think of this as giving your signal a little bit more force or punch, but not more power, which is kind of a weird comparison because what it'll do is it'll increase the average power, a speech processor will increase the average power of your signal, but it does not increase the peak envelope power of your signal. So you kind of want to think of it as kind of making your signal more clear, but not making it more powerful, if you, if you kind of get that gist. But a, signal pro a speech processor will increase the average power of your signal. Which of the following can be the result of an incorrectly adjusted speech processor? Well, there's many things that could happen as a result of an incorrectly adjusted speech processor. Three of them are distorted speech, splatter, and excessive background pickup. And this is an all of the above question on the exam. If your speech processor is not adjusted correctly, it can do a whole bunch of stuff. It can cause your signal to become distorted and increase harmonics. It can also pick up this and send small levels of background noise, like the squeaking of your chair, Sometimes the uh, like transmitter noise, like the turning of a knob, that type of stuff. So a lot of bad things can happen if your speech processor is incorrectly adjusted. What does an S meter measure? Well, this is a simple question. An S meter measures received signal strength. So you find this on a receiver and basically tells you how strong the incoming signal is. So S stands for signal, and that's a way you can remember S meter is used to measure received signal strength. How does an S meter reading of 20 decibels over S9 compare to an S9 signal assuming a properly calibrated S meter? The answer is the signal is 100 times stronger. And you just remember this one because the formula is really abstract and it's there on the screen if you, if you want to try it. But the, if you remember an S, S meter basically goes from S1 to S9. And each level on the S meter is four times stronger than the previous layer down. The, uh, once it gets to S9, it's measured in decibels over S9, so it just goes to single decibels. So 20 decibels over S9 is 100 times stronger than just S9. Where is an S meter generally found? Well, an S meter is generally found in a receiver because it's used to measure the incoming signal strength of a signal. So you're receiving a signal, you're going to know how strong it is, you use an S meter to figure that out. So the place of location where this would make the most sense is the receiver. And that, that's the common sense answer on the exam. Which of the following describes a type N connector? Well, a type N connector is a moisture resistant RF connector useful to 10 gigahertz. And this is a little bit of a technician class exam review. So type N connectors are common coax connectors and they're used probably most often in amateur radio. The, uh, as far as the possible answers on the exam, the type N connector is the one that has the most to do with amateur radio. I think that's the best way to say that. So the other ones deal with stereo stuff and some other junk, but type N connectors deal with amateur radio. So if you keep that in mind, that'll help if you have problems with this question. Which of the following connectors would be a good choice for a serial data port? The answer is DB9 of the possible answers. So a DB9 connector is the type of nine pin connector that you see on the back of a computer. And the two of the possible answers on the exam are the PL259 and the type N connectors, which are type of connectors used for the coax coming out of your transmitter. So it's probably best to just memorize this one, but DB9 is a connector that would be a good choice for a serial data port. Which of these connector types is commonly used for RF service at frequencies up to 150 megahertz? The answer is UHF, and this is a bit of a confusing question because Frequencies up to 150 megahertz are not UHF frequencies. What UHF is, is actually it's a family of connectors that um, both male and female type connectors that are used for coax and whatever 
for RF for service up to 150 megahertz. Now, I realize that 150 megahertz is not UHF, and if you go higher than that, you have to find the UHF, and it's not even close, but just remember that up to 150 megahertz, it's not anything else but UHF connectors that you're going to use, for, at least on the exam. Which of these connector types is commonly used for audio signals in amateur radio stations? The answer is RCA Phono. And the this isn't just for amateur radio. This is anybody who has a stereo or is trying to plug their video camera into their TV or anything. These are RCA jacks. So this is a very, very common connector for all types of audio and video and everything else that you would you, you would use it for. But if you associate phono as in phonograph with RCA phono, that, that'll help get this answer right on the exam. What is the main reason to use keyed connectors over non-keyed types? Well, the advantage is, is that they, you reduce the chance of damage due to incorrect mating. And essentially, don't overthink this question too much. A keyed connector is basically a connector that has a unique shape or a unique configuration so that when you plug it in, it can only go in one way. So, you know, if you try to get a plug into the socket and it won't fit, you turn it over and you try it again. Same type of idea. So don't overthink this one. All it means is that the, the, the connector has got a unique shape or configuration that prevents it from getting put in the socket the wrong way. And it's time for the G4D quiz. So take your piece of paper and number 1 through 11. I'll be going through the questions pretty quickly, so if you need more time, just pause the video and take all the time you need. When you're done with the quiz, stop by handwhisper.com, check your answers. You can find your answers under the exam answers page under the G4D section of questions. All right, with all that said, let's get going on the quiz. Question 1. What is the reason for using a properly adjusted speech processor with a single sideband phone transmitter? A. It reduces average transmitter power requirements. B. It reduces unwanted noise pickup from the microphone. C. It improves voice frequency fidelity. Or D. It improves signal intelligibility at the receiver. Question 2. Which of the following describes how a speech processor affects a transmitted single sideband signal? A. It increases the peak power. B. It increases the average power. C. It reduces harmonic distortion. Or D. It reduces intermodulation distortion. Question 3. Which of the following can be the result of an incorrectly adjusted speech processor? A. Distorted speech. B. Splatter. C. Excessive background pickup. Or D. All of these answers are correct. What does an S meter measure? A. Conductance. B. Impedance. C. Received signal strength. Or D. Transmitter power output. Question 5. How does an S meter reading of 20 decibels over S9 compare to an S9 signal assuming a properly calibrated S meter? A. It is 10 times weaker. B. It is 20 times weaker. C. It is 20 times stronger. Or D. It is 100 times stronger. Question 6. Where is an S meter generally found? A. In a receiver. B. In an SWR bridge. C. In a transmitter. Or D. In a conductance bridge. Question 7. Which of the following describes a type N connector? A. A moisture resistant RF connector useful to 10 GHz. B. A small bayonet connector used for data circuits. C. A threaded connector used for hydraulic systems. Or D. An audio connector used in surround sound installations. Question 8. Which of the following connectors would be a good choice for a serial data port? A. PL259. B. Type N, C, type SMA, or D, DB9. Question 9. Which of these connector types is commonly used for RF service at frequencies up to 150 MHz? A, octal, B, RJ11, C, UHF, or D, DB25? Question 10. Which of these connector types is commonly used for audio signals in amateur radio stations? A, PL259. B, BNC, C, RCA Phono, or D, Type N. What is the main reason to use keyed connectors over non-keyed types? A, prevention of use by unauthorized persons. B, reduced chance of damage due to incorrect mating. C, higher current carrying capacity. Or D, all of these choices are correct. 
And that's it for lesson 18. Now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com and check your answers. You can find them under the exam answers page under the G4D section of questions. And until next time, lesson 19, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.